you're doing business together or trying to build assets to, to steward resources to go on mission. What's up, guys? Welcome to another 5-Minute Fatherhood. So we love to dive deep into multi-generational family lines that seem to be doing well, especially in the fourth, fifth generations. One of the families yep. that has been seen at, in American culture as a successful multi-generational family is the Rockefeller family. And uh, recently there was a, a rare interview done with David Rockefeller Jr., the chairman of the Rockefeller Company. Um, and he said some things about his family. He was asked, like, what are, how, how have you guys done this? Uh, over the years, why is uh, why are you guys still friends? There's, I think, now 250 um, heirs of the Rockefeller family wow. from the original patriarch who started that. They are still getting along. <laughs> There's not been any kind of giant <laughs> blowups, um, and so they were they were just asking this interview. Tell us a little bit about what happened uh, and what what you think the secrets of that success has been. He said that uh, family has his de family has developed a system of values, traditions, and institutions that have helped the family stay together and preserve their wealth. They are useful to any family trying to raise children with good money values, even if you're not wealthy. The family has remained largely united without the public scandals, feuds, lawsuits, and tragedies that typical, typically plague other gilded dynasties. There are now over 250 members of the family who are direct descendants of John D. Rockefeller um, and Laura Spellman Rockefeller. And the three secrets that, that, um, that he sort of spelled out here were uh, family meetings, family history, and family values. Um, and mm. I thought these are each That's really, good. really powerful. Um, th he talked about how they work things out in these regular family meetings that they have, um, that, they, that they really honor the shared uh, history of the family, and that they have articulated some values that are, have been passed on generationally that have helped the family really stay together and stay united and um, and make sure that <clears throat> they're honoring um, the purpose of the legacy of, of, um, of the upstream generations that really uh, built the family. So I thought this was a really uh, interesting idea. Another thing they said is they've also, um, over the generations, less and less of them have been, uh, have been working in a business together. So a lot of that has mm. been worked out more at these meetings and different things that they've done to try to um, work on philanthropic um, uh, activities and things that they're trying to do to bless society. But I felt like this was a really, uh, and it's an interesting example. And anytime we can see, you know, these gen these families that have pierced into the fourth or fifth generation and are still staying united, it's really important to figure out, okay, what are they doing that's different? But yeah, Jeff, what are your thoughts on, yeah. on these guys? Well, I just love that part too, even what you said too, of like they're almost doing business less and less. Not that that's like dirty or wrong to not do business with your family, but I do think there's like a natural progression of generational where I feel mm. like you're doing business together or trying to build assets to, to steward resources to go on mission, right? And I think they've yeah. shown that really well with philanthropy, that like they're, that they that all the business stuff was, was just kind of a hedge or a leverage of then to do what they really wanted to do. Right. Um, and I think that's a, just a good reminder that to, to get a hundred years from now and actually have a family that's collectively like the last name is this missional organization, right. For the kingdom, I think is then to build up assets and resources and stewardship. And, and not just when I say assets, too, I don't just mean like financially or monetarily, but I mean, spiritual assets and, um, relational assets and all these different things, but build that up to take advantage of it. And I just think that's right. There's, those are the three secrets. The family meetings just keep you rhythmic. They keep everything short. Uh, you know, all the accounts short, they bring you back to like actually dealing with what you need to deal with family history. I feel like if you go back far enough, uh, you realize that your problems aren't as unique or aren't, aren't as big of a deal because you're in a longer, bigger story that always kind of minimizes your, your version, I think a little bit in a help, helpful way. Um, or like, Oh, something that's happening now is not super unique, you know? Yeah. Um, and then family values. I think, yeah, that's everyone operates on values. Mm -hmm. And so kind of always harping on that and keeping that consistent is huge. So yeah, I love that. Awesome. And guys, if you'd like to get a, a weekly email from me every Wednesday, um, I shoot out an email that just is talking about something going on in our family. It's called Jeremy's Journal. It's oftentimes just me kind of processing things that are happening kind of real time in my heart with regards to the family. I'd love to shoot that over to you. So if you'd like to subscribe uh, to that email, just go to familyteams.com and there's a couple places there you can uh, subscribe and you can get that, that email every Wednesday. 